Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how we can map fields from the product to the quote line within a revenue cloud. And so if you're like me and you're coming from the CPQ world, very similar to twin fielding, where you could set up a field on the product and another field on the quote line, make sure they have the same API name, same data type, and the data would automatically flow through from the product to the quote line whenever the quote line was created. Well, we can do the same thing within Revenue Cloud. It's a little bit more difficult to set up, a little bit more complex. But with that said, it does give you a lot more flexibility. And so today we're going to be talking about that and the exact steps that you can take to map any field from the product object to the quote line object within Revenue Cloud. So jumping in, this is what we're going to talk about today. If you're following along, make sure you create the fields. So make a field on the product object and then make a field within the quote line object. Once that's done, we're going to hop into the product discovery context definition. We're going to clone it, make some updates, update everywhere that references that context definition. And then we're going to make some updates to the sales transaction context definition. And lastly, we're going to test to make sure it's working great. So hopping into Salesforce, we have this product um, that we're going to be testing with today. It's just the support product, and you'll see that it has an installation date. This is the field that we want to map to the quote line. So to do this, we're going to jump over into setup and go to the context definitions. Now we're going to be using whatever is the active context definition that was extended from the product discovery context standard context definition. And so while you could clone this one, I do recommend going and finding if you do have one already, the active version of that context definition because if you have made any changes to that context definition you could run into some issues and you don't want to have to remake all those changes so i found that it works if you just clone this version to make sure you have the right version you can go to the product discovery settings and look for what is the context definition referenced here so once we know that and i know that it's this browse products context definition I'm going to come here and clone this. Now, while you might be saying, I thought we should never clone a context definition. There's a lot of good reasons why you shouldn't, but in this case, as of this time, you will need to because of some inheritance uh, when you extend and some things that you just can't do. And so unfortunately, as of this time, you will need to clone and that's what you have to do, at least for now. And so I'm going to name this. And save it. And once that's created, we can jump into it. And we are going to add some attributes. So I'm going to click edit. I'm going to change the date to the first of this month. Come over here to the nodes and I'm going to go to the product, the category product node. This is where I'm going to add the attribute. And so I'm going to add, not search, I'm going to add input output and make sure it's a date. If your field is a date. Next, we're going to add the node. or sorry, the tag and save that. All right. So now you have the attribute with its tag set up on the product discovery context definition. The next step is to map it from the product to the con the category product. And so to do that, you're going to go to map data, go to the product discovery mapping and click edit. 
and then map. And to give you some more context on what we're trying to do here, in order to get from the product to the quote line, we, what we have to do in Revenue Cloud is map from the product object to the category product node. And then from there, we'll map to the sales transaction item node. And then from there, we can map to the quote line. And so what I'm doing right now is setting up the mapping from the product to the category product node inside of the context definition. So coming back here, we're going to need to add a new object. So I'm going to search for product. Oops. Add that. And this is why you do need to clone this context definition because this is the step that you will not be able to do if you extend. And so I'm going to click this, map it to product. And then I'm going to search for installation date to make it a little bit easier on me. So I'm going to map installation date to installation date. I'm going to save that. And then one other step that you'll need to do before you're done with this product discovery context definition is come here to, you can click back to get back to the context definition. You're going to need to update its inheritance. And so you can do that by going to developer console. And then inside of developer console, you can run this query to get these fields from the context definitions. And what you're going to want to do is context is copy this inherited from paste that there. And here you can just next version of that save rows. And now if I refresh this, I should see that it has this inheritance. Now, while this does not mean that it's going to get updates whenever there's a Revenue Cloud update, that is a step that you'll need to do to make sure this works correctly. And so now we're done with updates to this context definition. We will need to now update wherever it's referenced. And so the first place to do that is within the product discovery settings. So I'm going to refresh this page and update from the browse catalogs context definition to my oh and the other thing you need to do is make sure it's active make sure it's active and then it should show up in this pick list next we're going to need to update some pricing procedures and so the first one is your standard product discovery pricing procedure. In order to update the context definition, you'll need to deactivate temporarily the version. So you're going to come here, deactivate. Now you can edit this. If you get an error while doing this, it probably means that your cloned context definition does not match the one that you previously had. And so that's why I'd recommend cloning the one that you're previously using. So once that's updated, you can come back and activate this. And then you'll need to go to your product qualification procedure, if you have one, and do the same process. So we're going to deactivate. the context definition and then reactivate. If you get an error activating, you might need to make sure that your start date of the version is after the start date of the context definition that you cloned. All right, so now we've updated everywhere that references the product discovery context definition. We're going to come here to a quote to test to make sure 
I think it's working. So I'm going to refresh this quote. And I should be able to search that support product, see it, and add it to a quote. All right, so we're able to do that without errors, which is a good sign. So our next step is to update the sales transaction context definition. So I'm going to come back to setup to the context definitions and go to the currently active sales transaction context definition. To make sure you have the right one, you can look at your pricing settings or your revenue settings um, and go to the pricing procedure that's used and make sure you're using this context definition. So the ex for me, it's the extended sales transaction. So when I'm here on the context definitions, I'm going to go to the extended sales transaction and I'm going to need to add some attributes. So I'm going to edit. And where I'm going to add them is on the sales transaction item. And so when I'm on the sales transaction item, I can add attribute. And put an output date and wrong get. Then we'll need to go back to the sales transaction item and create a tag. All right. Once you have that attribute set up, you can come to map data. And as a reminder, we just did this mapping from the product to the category product within the product discovery context definition. Now we need to map from the category product into the sales transaction item. And so to do that, we're going to go to the product discovery context mapping. So on the map data tab, inside of your sales transaction context definition, go to the product discovery context mapping, edit this map, and you're going to need to add a data source. So here on the right, you're going to say select data source. And instead of doing a Salesforce object, since we need the category product, we're going to come here and do context definition objects. And when you're searching for the context definition, make sure you select the cloned product discovery context definition that you just made. So don't select the browse the previous context definition and don't select the product discovery context definition. You need the one that you just created and updated. All right. So now we need to first map the sales transaction item to the category product. And then I'm going to search for installation date to narrow down. because I want to map the sales transaction item installation date to the category product installation date. All right, then we can save that. So that is how we got from the product to the category product to the sales transaction item. And now we need to go from the sales transaction item to the quote line. And so coming back here, I'm going to edit the quote line entities or the quote entities mapping. So this is already mostly set up, but what we'll do is we're searching for installation date. And on the sales transaction item, we're going to map from sales transaction item to the quote line item installation. Date. All right, and that's it. And so now after that's saved and everything's activated, we're going to come and test to make sure this is working properly. So if I come to the quote and I refresh it, I'm going to add the support product. Since if you remember, that is the product that has a value 
in the installation date field. And so now if I go to the quote line, I should see in the installation date field, the same value. And there it is. And so that is how you can map from the product to the quote line within revenue. A little bit more steps than in CPQ, but a lot more flexibility and how you can set that up. Don't need to have the same API names. And the other thing that I want to mention is that we do have another video out on how you can use attributes. And doing that really takes care of a lot of these scenarios where you might need to do this because attributes by default will maintain through the written cloud lifecycle from the quote line to the order product all the way to the asset. And so that's another way you can do a similar functionality in a much easier way. But if you do need to map custom fields, this is how you do that. Make sure to check out our other videos um, that are coming soon on how to map from the quote line on and through the revenue lifecycle. So if this was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and go check out our other videos on how to automate your business. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.